हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी आरटीपी डिस्कशन ऑफ लॉ सब्जेक्ट फॉर मे ट्वेंटी थ्री अटेम्प्ट दिस इज प्रोफेसर अमित मिश्रा ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ जेके शाह क्लासेस एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस आर एंटायर आरटीपी व्हिच इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर मे ट्वेंटी थ्री सो विदाउट टेकिंग योर मच टाइम विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम आई डायरेक्टली कम टू द पॉइंट आई डायरेक्टली कम टू द आर टी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर इज नो अमेंडमेंट इन अदर लॉस no amendment in other laws as you guys know your law subject is divided into two parts one is corporate law that is company law and the other one is other laws now there is no amendment in four chapters that is that is indian contract act negotiable instruments act general clauses act and interpretation of statutes these four chapters remains constant that means what you have studied till now from your notes in the classroom itself or whatever you have revised at home remains constant there is nothing new to be added or deleted you just need to learn what you have learned previously correct now regarding companies act there are few amendments there are few amendments and out of which there are only two to three material amendment which is going to affect your preparation which is going to affect your answer otherwise whatever is stated in rtp is just clarification or it is just an explanation that's it okay so now regarding first chapter regarding first chapter the amendment is in relation to small company exceeding 10 crores correct which does not exceeds 2 crore rupees or such higher amount as may prescribe not exceeding 10 crore so now this 2 crore is substituted by 4 crore that means this 2 crore is amended and now the maximum paid up share capital of small company is 4 crore rupees i repeat it is 4 crore rupees and same with respect to turnover with respect to turnover earlier it was maximum 20 crore or such higher amount as may prescribed not exceeding 100 crore rupees so now they have changed this 20 crore to rupees 40 crore so guys now for small company the limit is 4 crore and 40 crore i repeat the limit is 4 crore and 40 crore i repeat the limit is 4 crore and 40 crore 4 crore and 40 crore 4 crore and 40 crore earlier it was 2 and 20 now it is 4 and 40 however if government wants they can increase the limit from 4 crore to 10 crore or 40 crore to 100 crore but this 10 crore and 100 crore are not present limit this 10 crore and 100 crore are future limits which government has not yet notified which government has not yet notified that means for small company the limit is 4 crore and 40 crore i repeat once again the limit is 4 crore and 40 crore please do not create confusion in this they have just replaced 2 crore with 4 crore and 20 crore with 40 crore so if i have to give you an example say if a company say abc private limited abc private limited it has paid up share capital of say for example it has paid up share capital and turnover okay so it has paid up share capital of 3 crore rupees and turnover of rupees 30 crore so will it be called a small company will it be called a small company the answer will be yes because as per amended limit it is 4 and 40 and now abc private limited is satisfying both the condition so therefore it will be called as small company correct so if i talk about a company say for example xyz private limited it has paid up share capital of 5 crore and turnover of say for example 45 crore so is it small the answer no because it is breaching both the conditions breaching both the conditions say for example if i talk about a company called as pqr private limited pqr private limited it has paid up share capital of say 3 crore and turnover of rupees 50 crores so will it be called a small company guys will it be called a small company the answer will be no because for a private company to be called a small company it should satisfy both the conditions of paid up share capital as well as turnover so in the third example as you can see it is definitely satisfying the condition of paid up share capital but it is not satisfying the condition of turnover because the maximum turnover should be 40 crores 
and in the given example it is 50 crore therefore it is not small company again say for example there is a company called as a limited it has paid up share capital of 1 crore and turnover of rupees 10 crore 1 crore and 10 crore is it small company is it small company the answer is definitely no because it is a public company it is a public company because the word limited has been used so public company cannot be small company acha apart from that holding and subsidiary company section 8 company or special companies are also not considered as small company clear so this was the only amendment in unit number 1 that is chapter number 1 of company act 2013 i repeat the only amendment was that the limit of small company has been revised to 4 crore and 40 easy so this one is done now coming to chapter 2 coming to chapter 2 there is a section called as section number 16 which talks about rectification of name which talks about rectification of name now just to remind you this amendment was also covered in the rtp of previous attempt as well the same amendment was also covered in the rtp of previous attempt as well which was uh, uploaded on youtube in last year's october month so again they have given this particular thing in new rtp as well for may 23 so we i have to again discuss the same amendment the concept remains the same see there is something called as section 16 i repeat there is something called as section 16 of companies act 2013 which talks about rectification of name which talks about rectification of name okay so now the name of my company name of the company is same or similar same or similar to the name please ignore my handwriting name of the company same or similar to the name of existing company the name of the company same or similar to the name of existing company acha jksc students you do not need to worry as you have realized the amendment with respect to small company we have already covered it in the classroom and the amendment relating to section 16 also we have already covered in the classroom itself only but this rtp is for clarification for you guys and students who are not from jkc you can refer this amendment and incorporate in your whatever notes from you are studying whatever material do you have please incorporate the, these amendments in that material so that you can easily grasp it while revising okay now so section 16 talks about rectification of name it specifies that name of the company same or similar to the name of an existing company or or name of the company name of the company is same or similar to the existing trademark to the existing trademark to the existing trademark a yes or no so see if the name of my company is same or similar to the name of other company so then in that case in that case in that case central government will order company to change its name to change its name within 3 months within how many months 3 months by passing ordinary resolution what is our ordinary resolution so very simple if my company is registered with the name which is same or similar to the name of an existing company now this can be a clerical error this can be through in advertence there can be any situation which can lead to this particular circumstances so if the name of my company is similar to the name of an existing company then in that particular situation central government will itself sue mode central government will sue mode central government will sue mode that is on its own on its own sue mode order the company to change its name within how many months 3 months and which resolution we have to pass ordinary resolution on the other hand name of my company is similar to the trademark of an existing company so the registered proprietor 
that is proprietor of the trademark proprietor of the trademark shall make application shall make application to central government to change the name of the company to change the name to change the name of the company to change the name of the company i repeat to change the name of the company and such application such application shall be made shall be made within such application shall be made within 3 years from the incorporation of the company from the in corporation of the company a hey, yes or no a hey, yes or no so if the name of my company is similar to the trademark of any other person so the owner the registered owner the proprietor of that trademark will mail make application against my company to central government he will make application against my company to whom to central government but the proprietor of the trademark should make an application to central government within 3 years of my incorporation within 3 years of my incorporation not 3 years from when he comes to know about it 3 years from the date on which my company is incorporated say for example the date of incorporation date of incorporation of my company is 15th july 2021 15 july 2021 and the other person came to know about it on say 29th december 2023 say for example date of incorporation is 15 july 2021 and my company is incorporated with a name which is similar to the trademark of any other person and that person came to know that person came to know about it on 29 december 23 so law is very specific law is very clear law says that you have to count 3 years from your date of incorporation and not from the date when he comes to know about it simple easy then now so in this particular situation if an application is made to central government if an application made to central government against the company against the company then central government will order company to change its name to change its name within 3 months within 3 months by passing ordinary resolution by passing ordinary resolution acha the amendment is earlier here it was 6 months earlier here it was 6 months now they have changed the timeline and they have reduced it to 3 months this was the amendment now since i am explaining you the section i'll explain the complete section only so that your revision is also done now central government has ordered to change the name within 3 months by passing ordinary resolution so now what can happen company changes its name company changes its name so if company changes its name company shall inform roc company shall inform roc within 15 days okay company shall inform roc within how many days 15 days but now on the other hand if company does not changes its name changes its name see central government ordered company to change name within 3 months by passing ordinary resolution but company is not taking central government seriously in the same manner you students are not taking your syllabus seriously so in this particular situation central government earlier used to impose fine i repeat central government earlier used to impose fine so if central government has ordered you to change your name and you are not listening to central government so they will impose a fine on company of rupees 1000 for every day and on officer they will impose a fine of rupees 5000 to 1 lakh rupees but now they have changed it now they have changed it now they say that if a company is not changing its name on the application or on the order of central government then in that particular case central government will itself give new name to the company 
सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विल इट सेल्फ गिव न्यू नेम टू द कंपनी अर्लियर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट यूज टू रिक्वेस्ट कंपनी प्लीज चेंज योर नेम प्लीज चेंज योर नेम योर नेम इज सिमिलर टू ट्रेडमार्क और योर नेम इज सिमिलर टू अंडर कंपनीज नेम एंड कंपनीज यूज टू कंटेम्प्ट द ऑर्डर ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट दे यूज टू नेवर लेसन ओनली so central government was left with only one option and that is to impose fine and after imposing fine also central government will have to keep the track record who has paid fine who has not paid fine so there was so much complications which central government has now eradicated central government has simply said that if you do not change your name okay we have something called as mentos zindagi it means we it's we ourselves will give new name to you and now you'll have to follow that new name however if you do not like new name given by us you can always change your name as per section 13 you can always change your name as per section 13 that is alteration of name clause in memorandum of association a yes or no easy simple so central government will itself give new name to the company however if company wants to change its name company wants to change its name given by central government given by central government then they can do so they can do so as per section 13 as per section 13 which talks about alteration of memorandum of association that is alteration of name clause easy so this was the entire amendment there was nothing new in it students which have been taught in the classroom especially jkc students we know that we have already covered this particular thing in the same format which i have given now correct so what the section 16 talks about rectification of name if the name of my company is similar to the name of an existing company or if the name of my company is similar to the trademark of any other person so in that particular case they will make application to central government and central government will direct me to change my name within 3 months it is 3 months on both sides 3 months here also 3 months here also and by passing which resolution ordinary resolution but the in case of trademark the owner of the trademark should make application against my company within how many years 3 years from my incorporation from my incorporation and again company can either change its name or company refuses to change its name Com if company changes its name then that particular situation they will inform roc within 15 days if they refuse to change their name then in that particular situation central government will itself give a new name and if company does not like the name given by central government they can always change their name by themselves by as per section 30 is it so the amendment of two chapters are already covered now i am moving to third chapter there is a very simple small amendment in chapter number 3 and that too only in section number 42 only in section number 42 that is private placement section 42 read with rule 14 i repeat section 42 read with rule 14 clear easy simple acha there is something which is newly added newly inserted in section number 42 that is private placement that is private placement now what is that thing see a private placement is a concept where a company where a company instead of going to public and asking funds from them company goes to particular investor or group of investors gives them letter of offer explains them that what company's plans and goals are and then take money from them and issue shares to them. that means not going public and going to particular investor and raising fund that is called as private placement correct but now if indian companies if indian companies that is any company registered in india if they want to do private placement if they want to do private placement if they want to give offer or invitation of private placement offer or invitation of private placement i repeat if any company wants to if any company wants to give offer or invitation of private placement to any person to any individual or body corporate individual or body corporate 
to any individual body corporate who is who is a national who is a national of a country who is a national who is a national of a country which shares a land border with india simple if a company wants to make offer or invitation of private placement to any person or body corporate which is from that country which shares border which shares border with our country which shares border with our country then 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 company will have to obtain central government approval under foreign exchange under foreign exchange management under foreign exchange management non debt instruments non debt instruments non debt instruments rules 2019 non debt instrument rule 2019 hey, yes or no easy so this is the new point which is inserted in private placement very important questions may be asked from this particular thing the amendment which was of chapter 1 that is with respect to small company and the amendment which we are studying right now of private placement that is section 42 read with rule 14 are the material amendments from which institute can ask you question in the coming attempt so what does the amendment of chapter 3 private placement says it says if a company is offering private placement to a person that is whether individual or a artificial person that is whether a natural person or artificial person and that natural person or artificial person is a national is a national is a national of that country which shares border with india which shares border with india land border with india then for giving private placement to those people we will have to obtain a special permission of central government under foreign exchange management non debt instrument rules 2019 a yes or no acha the reason for this amendment was see the tensions are escalating between india and pakistan india and china see i will be wrong if i use the word escalation because it was already there since so many years and no, there are tensions which are continuously building between india pakistan india china so we cannot target any country directly no in our law so that's why they have used the sentence that any country sharing border land border with india that is pakistan china nepal bhutan so if i if i want to give those people private placement then i will have to take special permission of central government under for an exchange management non debt instrument rule 2009 and this is all because of the tension mounting between india china and india pakistan this is the only reason they have used this word and they have this is the only reason because see india any which ways have curtailed their trade they do not trade much with pakistan we do not have any commercial transaction with pakistan on a large scale same goes with china do import goods from china but now we are taking precautions as a precautionary measure if we want to give private placement to people living in those countries will have to first obtain approval of central government easy simple so the amendment till third chapter is over okay there is no new amendment apart from these three points okay now there is no amendment in chapter 4 huh? no amendment in chapter 4 i'll write over here no amendment in unit 4 that is share capital and division there is no amendment acha in unit 5 there is a very small amendment in acceptance of deposit very very small amendment all of you know there is something called as dpt3 there is something called as dpt3 which talks about return of deposits return of deposits i repeat which talks about return of deposits 
so now what they are saying that whenever a company will file return of deposit it will also contain a declaration by auditor of the company that the words letter declaration whenever company will file form dpt3 it will also contain a declaration by the auditor of the company that yes they have audited the company they have audited the company with respect to deposits with respect to deposits so for chapter 5 i will write it down over here for chapter 5 see if you want this theory if you want to copy this theory then what you can do you can simply pause the video you can copy because giving time for copying is completely waste of time for you guys also and for me also okay so now chapter 5 which talks about deposits which talks about deposits in this chapter in this chapter the amendment it is a very small amendment i don't think institute will ask question from this but still we'll have to cover this right now it says whenever a company will file return of deposits with roc in form dpt3 it will also contain declaration from the auditors declaration from the auditors that yes you people have complied with all the provisions of the audit uh, all the provision of deposit that is 73 to 76 a and all your financial statements and etc are audited that was the only amendment this is the only thing which you have to note down that whenever company will file dpt3 they will also add declaration of auditor that's it as simple as that okay now uh, coming to chapter number 6 that is registration of charges see in chapter number 1 there was amendment with respect to only small company in chapter number 2 it was that amendment which we have already covered in previous rtp and now we are covering it again for your convenience that is 6 months have been reduced to 3 months and now they have removed fine they themselves give a new name to you however you can change your name after uh, if you do not like the name given by central government in chapter number 3 that is private placement the amendment is the amendment is with respect to private placement where if you want to give private placement offer to a person who is from country which shares land border with india so we cannot give them without approval of central government we cannot give them without approval of central government simple acha there is no amendment in share capital chapter in fifth chapter we only have to add declaration of auditor in form dpt3 simple so five chapter are over now in sixth chapter that is registration of charges again there is a very simple and very 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 easy amendment the amendment is see whenever a company whenever a company takes loan takes secured loan whenever a company takes secured loan they create charge on the assets of the company in favor of lender they create charge on the assets of the company in favor of lender say for example if there is a company called as reliance industries limited they have taken loan from lunch break bank that is sbi bank okay they have taken loan from sbi bank of rupees 100 crore of rupees 100 crore and against which reliance industry limited have kept their office building as security has kept their office building as security a yes or no simple so rl has taken loan of 100 crore and they have kept their office building as security simple so now what rl will do rl will create charge in the favor of lender rl will create charge in the favor of lender and reliance industries limited will file form cag1 or cag9 acha all of you know cag1 is application for registration of charge and cag9 is also application for registration of charge but in case of debentures in case of what debentures simple so now the amendment is the amendment is if the borrower is a bank if the borrower is a bank and the lender is rbi lender is rbi and bank has kept something as a security in favor of rbi 
then provisions of CAG1, CAG9, that is the requirement of registration of charge will not apply. The requirement of registration of charge will not apply. Now, just to explain you this concept, I will use an example. Say, achha, every one of you know that sometimes bank also borrow money from RBI to meet their temporary liquidity requirements. Hey, yes or no? Hey, you guys have studied economics. You guys know what is repo rate, what is reverse repo rate. Hey, yes or no? You also know what is bank rate. Hey, yes or no? You also know what is SLR. You also know what is CRR. So, these are the basic concepts of economics. A yes or no, guys. So, now, the amendment is, if a banking company, if a banking company have taken loan from RBI, you have taken loan from RBI and they have kept something as security with RBI. So, the provisions of provisions of registration of charge the provision of registration of registration of charge will not apply will not apply a yes or no i repeat if a banking company has taken loan from rbi and they've kept something as a collateral or a security with rbi then the provision of registration of charge will not apply that is there will uh, not be any cag1 cag9 anything okay so see they have mentioned over here this rule shall apply nothing in this rule shall apply that is this rule shall not apply on any charge required to be created or modified by a banking company under 77 in favor of RBI. So banking company has created charge in favor of RBI. I repeat banking company has created charge in favor of RBI then they are not required to register those charge with ROC by filing form CAG1 or CAG9. Simple easy and this was the first amendment of chapter number 6 that is registration of charges the second amendment is the second amendment is if a company is under insolvency if a company is under insolvency insolvency under insolvency bankruptcy code insolvency bankruptcy code 2016 insolvency and bankruptcy code 2000 then all e forms all e forms will be all e forms will be signed by insolvency resolution professional or resolution professional or liquidator or what liquidator see normally what we have studied that whenever a company files form CAG1 or CAG9 it is signed by the company that is officers and directors of the company a yes or no but if a company is under liquidation that is a company is going to die very soon or if a company is under insolvency bankruptcy code now insolvency bankruptcy code 2016 is a wonderful law which talks about revival of sick companies revival of sick companies that is companies which are ill companies which are on the verge of bankruptcy we are reviving those companies we are reviving those companies a simple and very famous example i can give you is jet airways if you have heard about Jet Airways, Jet Airways was under insolvency, was under insolvency and I think it is still under insolvency, I have not read it recently, but it is still under insolvency. So, if Jet Airways is creating any charge, if Jet Airways is creating any charge, then that charge will not be signed by the officers or directors of the company, it will be signed by insolvency resolution professional or a resolution professional or liquidated or liquidated. Now, insolvency resolution professional or resolution professional are the persons who are responsible for revival of the company under insolvency bankruptcy code. They are the person who are appointed to manage everything. So, they will sign all the e-forms under registration of charges chapter. That is CAG1, application for registration of charge, 
in normal cases cg9 application for registration of charge in case of debentures cg4 application for satisfaction of charge cg8 condonation for delay with central government see so all those forms cg1 cg4 cg8 cg9 acha cg1 or 9 is for registration of charge is for registration of charge okay now cg4 is for application application for application for satisfaction application for satisfaction of registration of charge yes or no and cg8 is for condonation of delay that is if company does not files satisfaction of charge within 300 days then after that we will have to make application to central government inform cg8 to allow us that we can file our satisfaction of charge even after 300 days so in that case form number cg8 is filed so cg1 cg9 cg4 cg8 in all those cases in simple equation or in simple words any cg form which is to be filed by the company it is signed by director or officers but if the same company is under insolvency or liquidation then it will be signed by either insolvency resolution professional or resolution professional or liquidator by the company so i believe they may ask you question from this thing okay so this was the again this is again a uh, important amendment of this particular chapter that is registration of charges so there is one amendment in unit 1 one amendment in unit 2 one amendment in unit 3 no amendment in unit 4 one amendment in unit 5 deposits deposit three alter and two amendment in registration of charges the, the first one is charges which are created in the favor of rbi by the banks there is no need to re register those charges and the second one is if the company is under liquidation it will be signed by insolvency resolution professional or resolution professional or liquidator of the company okay again a very 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 small amendment in chapter number 7 a very small amendment in chapter number 7 it was there earlier also it was there earlier also okay so now the amendment is as you all know any person can inspect register of members of the company yes or no i repeat any person can inspect register of members of the company or register of index now company maintains register of members in form mgt1 a yes or no yes or no and register of debenture holders in form number m g t i am so sorry in form number m g t 2 yes or no so every company maintains register of members in m g t 1 and register of debenture holders in form m g t 2 now regarding register of members regarding register of members i repeat once again regarding what register of members a yes or no regarding register of members any person can inspect whether that person is member of the company or outsider any person can come and inspect register of members see if i want to inspect register of members of reliance industries limited i will go to the company i will make a payment uh, i will make a payment of fees and i'll ask them to please show me their register of members so they will have to show it it is given in companies act itself simple but whenever you are going to inspect register of members of the company there are certain informations you cannot inspect and you are not allowed to inspect those information in fact company will not provide you that information only see what is written over here notwithstanding anything contained in sub rule 1 or 2 the following particulars of register or index or return in respect of members of a company shall not be made available for any inspection that means if you are making application to company to inspect their register of members so you will not get to inspect all these four points you cannot inspect address of any member you will not get any email id of that particular member you will not get ui and that is unique identification number and neither you will get pan number these four details about a particular member you are restricted to access you cannot access those details company will not show you that details you are not allowed to inspect this four details of a particular member of any company say if i go to reliance industry limited i ask register of members they provide it to me so now i am asking for pan numbers also of the members i am asking for email id also i am asking for address also so they won't be providing me all those things 
and this is newly inserted provision it was not there earlier however we have already covered this particular thing in previous attempts rtp also acha this thing was introduced just to protect the personal details of member of the company to protect privacy to respect the privacy of a member simple easy now moving forward there is one very very small amendment i don't think they will be asking question but very small amendment it is in chapter number 8 declaration and payment of dividend acha the amendment is with respect to ipf that is investor education and protection fund one more point is inserted one more point is inserted with respect to credit in ipf now when i say credit in ipf that means i am referring to section number 125 sub section 2 now when i say credit in ipf it means there are certain amount which are credited in ipf and that amount is utilized by ipf to promote and protect the interest of investors and to educate investors right so what extra point is added all the shares held by the authority that is ipf in accordance with the proviso of sub section 9 of section 90 of the act and all the result benefit arising out of such share without any restriction what is this mean See, section 90 talks about significant beneficial owner. Section 90 talks about significant beneficial owner. So, in that particular situation, it is duty of the company to identify significant beneficial owner and compel that significant beneficial owner to make declaration that yes, he is significant beneficial owner. I repeat, if you have read section 90, you will be aware that section 90 talks about significant beneficial owner. yes or no so if a person is a significant beneficial owner he has to make declaration to the company and if he fails to make declaration then company imposes restrictions company imposes restrictions on those particular shares by making application to ncl by making application to ncl okay so any shares which are resulting from significant beneficial owner from significant beneficial owner those shares those shares are deposited in are deposited in iepf are deposited in iepf and any resulted benefit any bonus shares right shares dividend etc everything will also be deposited in iepf simple you just need to remember this if there is something called a section 90 that is significant beneficial owner if there is something called as significant beneficial owner and the restrictions are imposed on the shares of significant beneficial owner i repeat if the restrictions are imposed on the shares of significant beneficial owner and those restrictions are not removed within one year and those restrictions are not removed within one year then those shares will be transferred to iepf iepf that is ipf will be credited simple so you need to read this point along with section 9 along with section 90 a yes or no easy done simple so this was the amendment till chapter number 8 till chapter number 8 i can say chapter 1 2 3 is amended that means there is a small small amendment in all these three chapter no amendment in chapter number 4 then again amendment in chapter number 5 6 7 and 8 again but very very small amendment now coming to amendment of chapter number 9 accounts of company now there are so many amendments in this chapter but all those amendments are very small small amendment there are very least chances that your answers will be affected because of this amendment however there are certain points which we need to focus more i can also say that there is less of amendments and more of clarification so clarification i repeat starting from clarification mca has clearly specified that if a company is spending money if a company is spending money towards creating health infrastructure for covid establishment of medical oxygen as well as storage plants manufacturing and supply of oxygen concentrators etc then those activities will be considered as eligible areas for doing csr the reason being that during covid there was shortage of oxygen in india especially during the second wave 
तो इन ऑर्डर टू काउंटर दो डिफिकल्ट टाइम्स गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज एम सी ए एनकरेज कंपनी टू स्पेंड ऑन दो पर्टिकुलर एरिया सो दैट दे विल ऑल्सो गिव द बेनिफिट ऑफ यू नो काउंटिंग दैट एक्सपेंडिचर टू वर्ड सी एस आर एज वेल दिस द अदर क्लैरिफिकेशन वॉज इफ अ कंपनी इज स्पेंडिंग मनी इफ अ कंपनी स्पेंडिंग मनी टू वर्ड्स कंडक्टिंग रिसर्च इन साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी इंजीनियरिंग एंड मेडिसिन एंड दो रिसर्च कंडक्टेड बाई यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दो रिसर्च आर बींग कंडक्टेड इन यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन देन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन दैट एक्टिविटीज विल ऑल्सो बी कंसिडर एज एलिजिबल एक्टिविटी फॉर सी एस आर एक्सपेंडिचर सो दिस वॉज लेस ऑफ अमेंडमेंट एंड मोर ऑफ क्लैरिफिकेशन देन अगेन अ कंपनी कैन कोलैबरेट विद अदर कंपनी टू डू सी एस आर एक्टिविटी दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन आर क्लास रूम सो यू नीट रीड दीज पॉइंट प्लीज डू नॉट बाय हार्ट प्लीज रीड दीज पॉइंट बिफोर ओनली वंस वेन यू आर रिफरिंग आर टी पी दैट्स इट यू डोंट नीड टू बाय हार्ट ऑल दिस पॉइंट प्लीज गाइड नाउ गोइंग अहेड इफ अ कंपनी स्पेंडिंग टू वर्ड यू नो वैक्सीनेशन ऑफ पर्सन अदर देन एम्प्लॉज फैमिलीज अदर देन एम्प्लॉज एंड फैमिलीज देन इट विल बी कंसिडर एज एलिजिबल सी एस आर एक्सपेंडिचर If a company is spending money for vaccination for their employees and their families, then it is not CSR expenditure. Huh? Moving ahead, in last year we had a campaign called as Har Ghar Tiranga, called as Har Ghar Tiranga. So in that particular situation also, if a company is spending aggressively towards manufacturing of Indian flag, distributing it and promoting Har Ghar Tiranga campaign, so that expenditure will also be considered as CSR expenditure. so these were the clarification regarding csr please keep this thing in mind one clarification was regarding covid the other one was regarding research conducted by universities and other organizations in the field of science technology or any other related fields the next one was for har ghar tiranga one more was for a company can collaborate with other company for csr activities that's it now moving ahead the amendment now which i will be discussing is very very important you need to focus on this see one more requirement has been introduced by mca one more requirement has been introduced by mca now sir what are those requirement what are those requirement see every company every company covered under the provisions of csr provisions of csr now guys please remember this amendment is very important and complicated i will be giving you the best possible analysis of all the languages written in this particular rtp so please focus over here every company which is covered under the provision of csr will have to prepare will have to prepare a report on csr on report on csr in form csr2 in form csr2 that means mca has introduced a new form called as form csr2 in which a company will prepare a report of their annual activity on csr simple okay and form csr2 form csr 2 will be attached will be attached to the financial statements to the financial statements filed with roc financial statement filed with roc so if a company is filing financial statement with whom roc then in that financial statement one more report will be added called as csr report in form csr2 and it will be submitted to roc so this is statement this is report on csr both will be given to roc simple now just for your knowledge just for your knowledge however it is there in the syllabus but again just for your knowledge in order to make you understand this amendment more precisely every company files 
एवरी कंपनी फाइल्स फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स विथ आर ओ सी विथ आर ओ सी विथ इन थर्टी डेज ऑफ एजीएम विद इन थर्टी डेज ऑफ एजीएम दिस इज द बेसिक प्रोविजन विथ आर ओ सी विद इन थर्टी डेज ऑफ एजीएम एंड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इज फाइल्ड इन फॉर्म इन फॉर्म ए ओ सी फोर फॉर नॉर्मल कंपनीज फॉर सर्टन कंपनीज इट इज इन ए ओ सी फोर एक्स बी आर एल एंड फॉर एन बी एफ सी इट इज ए ओ सी फोर एन बी एफ सी इंड एस एन बी एफ सी इंड एस विच मीन्स एवरी कंपनी विल अटैच सी एस आर टू इन ए ओ सी फोर और ए ओ सी फोर एक्स बी आर एल और ए ओ सी फोर एन बी एफ सी इंड एस simple easy done now this requirement everything is clear till now see again i will repeat for you every company will have to submit form csr2 along with its financial statement to roc every year again for your knowledge financial statement is filed in form aoc4 aoc4 xbrl or aoc4 nbfc index that means csr2 will be attached in oc4 the basic discussion is this only ach this concept was introduced this concept was introduced okay the amendment the amendment was introduced on 11th february 2020 11 february 2022 11th February 2022. Okay, so this amendment was introduced on 11th February 2022. Okay, and and it was to be done from financial year 2020-21 onwards. Okay. so mca came on 11th february 2022 they said every who are covered in csr you need to file form csr2 along with your financial statements and this requirement will start from the year 2020 2021 now let me analyze this statement see financial year 1st april 2020 To thirty first March, two thousand twenty one. This is the first year from which we have to CSR two. Okay. So let us assume date of AGM. So let us say date of AGM is thirtieth September two thousand twenty one. And if we are conducting AGM on thirtieth September, we will have to file financial statement within thirty days of AGM. that means financial statement to roc will be given latest by 30th october 2021 30th october 2021 and what is date of amendment doa is date of amendment date of amendment is 11th february 2022 date of amendment is 11th february 2022 please understand the scenario what i am trying to imply over here please understand it is not difficult it is just logical on 11 feb 2022 they came and they said you will have to follow this from 2020 21 but don't you think when they introduced the amendment companies had already filed their financial statement with roc because their agm has already been done in the year 2021 itself so therefore therefore for the financial year 2020 21 company will file form csr2 separately separately and it should be filed 
it should be filed on or before 31st march 2022 it should be filed on or before 31st march 2022 because it is not possible for the first year that is for the year 2021 to attach csr2 in financial statement because understand guys financial statement has already been filed with roc so therefore they will file form csr2 separately simple easy now going ahead going ahead on 31st march 2022 they realize the time is very less to file form csr2 for the year 2021 for the year 2021 so they extended date date was extended again mca on 31st march 2022 came with a notification and they said the date will be now extended till 31st may 2022 so they gave two more months to the companies to file form csr2 for the financial year 2020 this we are talking about for the financial year 2020 simple again on 31st may they came and they extended the date further till 30th june 2022 they extended the date till 30th june 2022 i repeat they extended the date till 30th june 2022 hey, yes or no see please please understand this thing please understand this thing we are talking all this requirement for the financial year 2020 2021 for the financial year 2020 2021 we need to file csr2 Lately, because financial statements had already been, so we'll file till 31st March 2022. But the time was very less, so MCA extended period by two months. That is till 31st May. Then again, they realized that there are certain companies who have not yet filed form CSR2. So again, they extended the period by one more month. That is 30th June 2022. So all in all, I can say for financial year 2020-21. You can file form CSR two till thirty eighth June two thousand twenty two. Extended period? A yes or no? Simple, easy, done. Acha. Now for acha after twenty twenty one it will be twenty one twenty two. So for the financial year twenty one twenty two, twenty one twenty two. Don't you think till two thousand twenty two we are following, we are filing. Form CSR two for twenty twenty one. So, institute has specified that for the financial year twenty one twenty two also file form CSR two separately till thirty first March two thousand twenty three. Till thirty first March two thousand twenty three. Please understand. See, since we are filing. CSR two of twenty one till thirty eighth June two thousand twenty two. So MCA specifies, the government specifies that for the year twenty one twenty two, since you are filing form CSR two of even still, so you can file CSR two of twenty one twenty two and twenty two separately till thirty first March twenty three. You don't need to attach it with financial statements. Simple, easy, clear. i believe going ahead that is from financial year 22 23 onwards maybe they will ask you to to attach to financial statement but form csr2 has been filed separately with lines given timelines yes or no simple so this was all about the amendment regarding dates for filing form csr2 please do not read rtp directly you will get confused you just need to follow this timeline you just need to follow this timeline simple easy to so csr2 should be filed along with financial statement this was the basic but amendment came agm was already over financial statements were already filed so therefore they told us that please file separately by 31st march 22 but again they extended period till 30th june 2022 therefore year 2122 they had to extend the period till 31st march 23 and they, we should file separately and not along with financial statement going ahead obviously we'll have to file along with financial statement but as of now we can file separately 
Is he clear? Now, if you closely see what I have covered, I have covered this thing. I have covered this particular thing also. Acha, one thing I need to specify to you, or one thing I need to notify to you separately. Please come to your JKST textbook or whatever material you have. Please come to Rule Three, which talks about maintenance of books of accounts in electronic form. Section number one twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Rule Three. Here we have a date in fourth point, which is first day of April twenty twenty-one. We just need to do here two thousand twenty-three. Two thousand twenty-three. That means every company should use an accounting software which is capable of recording audit trail, which can create edit log, keep a record of edit log, and all those things. So that requirement is now implemented from first day of April two thousand twenty-three onwards. So, if a company will start doing it from first April 2023, then also it will be okay. Easy, simple. So, this was one more amendment. So, I have covered this also. This is also covered. See, 30th June. Again, this is also covered. See, 31st March 23 for 21, 22. Okay. Now, again, this is important. This is important. Now, every one of you know that if a books of account is kept in electronic form. so it shall remain accessible in india it shall remain accessible in india i am still in rule 3 only chapter 9 rule 3 books of accounts in electronic form so earlier it shall remain accessible in india now they specify that it shall remain accessible in india at all times at all times because what companies used to do they used to keep books of account in electronic form and the word which was written over here is accessible in india so what does government mean by this government want that it should be accessible in india every time all times few ne used to comply this periodically say for example 10 days i am keeping it accessible in india 20 days i am not so now those loopholes will be filled by this amendment because they have added word at all at all times that means if a books of account is kept in electronic form it should be at all times accessible in india first one is done second in sub rule 5 in provide the periodic basis the word daily basis shall be substituted now one of you know if a company is maintaining books of accounts of branch office outside india so summarized return should be periodically sent to from branch office to head office so this periodical basis has now been amended to daily basis this periodical basis has now been amended to daily basis simple so first they changed date over here it is now 2023 second they added word at all times next the details from branch office should be given to head office on daily basis on daily basis next again where the service provider is located outside india see we are talking about this if a service provider if a service provider jkc student 7 point and other people who are having their material i am in rule 3 maintenance of books of accounts in electronic so if a company is maintaining books of account in electronic form and service provider is located outside india the name and address of the person in control of the books of account and other books and paper in india so if a service provider if a service provider is from outside india outside india so service provider give us name an address of that person who will be in charge in india who will be in charge in india so that our government can contact with that person in case of any difficulties or discrepancies so again one more additional requirement that if a service provider is from a country outside india so they should give a name and address of a person in india who is responsible to maintain everything easy done okay so this is also done now going forward yes one more amendment one more amendment relating to csr now they say that if a company has any amount unspent in unspent csr account if a company has amount 
in its in its unspent csr account then company shall shall constitute csr committee then company shall company shall constitute csr committee and comply with the provisions comply with the provisions relating to csr expenditure relating to csr expenditure now every one of you know that every company should spend at least 2% of their average net profit of last 3 financial years so sometimes what happens you know company fails to utilize entire amount so they transfer that particular amount in unspent csr account if they have ongoing csr project so if company is having any unspent csr amount in that unspent csr account the company need to constitute csr committee and undertake csr activity simple again a very small amendment and last but not the least sub rule 2 is omitted now when i say sub rule 2 is omitted what do i mean by this every time when i teach csr i use a dialogue that isko laga dala to 3 saal ke liye life jhing pa lala once the provision of csr applies it continues to apply for a period of 3 years for a 3 years now it is omitted now it is omitted it is not there please please cancel this particular thing this is omitted now which means i will have to constitute csr committee only if i am satisfying criteria of applicability of csr in previous year that means if i am in year 2022-23 so whether i will constitute csr committee in 2022-23 it depends upon my previous years limit that is 21-22 If in 2122 I am bridging the limit of net worth of minimum 500 crores, turnover of minimum 1000 crores, or net profit of minimum 5 crore, then I will do CSR in 2022-23. For 23-24, what used to happen? See, if I am bridging limit in 21-22, so by default in 22-23 I will do CSR, in 23-24 I will do CSR, and in 24-25 I will do CSR. By default, it was by default. once the act applies it continues to apply for 3 years but now it is omitted it is omitted in 23 24 whether i will do csr or not it depends upon the limit of 22 23 in 24 25 whether i will do csr or not it depends upon the limit of 23 20 in 25 26 whether i will do csr or not it will depend on the limit of 24 and 25 that means now there is nothing called as लगा डाला तो तीन साल के लाइफ झिंगा लगा देर इज नथिंग लाइक दैट यूल हैव टू चेक ईच ईयर्स लिमिट दैट इज प्रीवियस ईयर्स लिमिट फॉर चेकिंग द एप्लीकेबिलिटी ऑफ सी एस आर इन करंट ईयर इजी सो दिस वॉज वन ऑफ द मेजर अमेंडमेंट मूविंग अगेन दिस यू डोंट नीड टू लर्न और बाय हार्ट दिस इज जस्ट द रूट थ्रू विच यू विल डू सी एस आर है ना अ कंपनी डू सी एस आर थ्रू सेक्शन एट कंपनी ट्रस्ट और सोसाइटी or section 8 company trust or society of government or statutory body or any random trust or society which has track record of last 3 financial years this all is just basic requirement you just need to read it please do not by heart acha whenever you will do csr through trust or society that trust or society is registered under income tax act 1961 so they have quoted those sections you don't need to read sections i repeat you don't need to read and by heart this section please trust me you just need to know a company can do csr activity through company under section 8 trust or society that's it at max you can write trust or society registered under income tax act or registered under prescribed section of income tax act please do not go for by hiding this 4 5 6 6 a of clause 23 uh, c etc please do not go for that rest assured everything is same you don't need to uh, by hard this they are just telling you that a company should do csr through company trust or society registered under relevant section of income tax you can write language simple now moving forward 
this is also a very good point everyone knows that if average csr obligation of a company exceeds rupees 10 crore in last 3 financial years then company is required to conduct impact assessment a yes or no to conduct impact assessment is it so every company who csr obligation who's average csr obligation who's average cs average csr obligation exceeds rupees 10 crore in last 3 financial years so they will do impact assessment of those projects in which they have invested minimum 1 crore and one year has been expired after completion of that project because for evaluating the impact there is certain time frame which need to be given for that um, uh, particular project to be implemented a yes or no so now what is the amendment over here is that impact assessment impact assessment is done by independent agency independent agency correct so now that independent agency will not work for free they will charge some fees so how much fees we can give earlier it was 5% or 50 lakh whichever is less if you remember it is given in my notes as well and in jkc notes as well and the people who are not from jkc it is paid in your relevant study material also so every company which is carrying impact uh, assessment can pay impact assessment agency ya independent agency 5% of their csr expenditure 50 lakhs whichever is less so now this has been changed now it is now 2% it is now 2% or 50 lakhs whichever is higher 2% of your csr expenditure or is whichever is higher so 5% is substituted by 2% whichever is lower is substituted by whichever is higher i repeat lower is this higher and is substituted by 2 so please go to your respective notes where you have uh, that impact assessment point you need to just strike 5% from here write 2% Write two percent and cancel whichever is less and write whichever is higher. That's it. That's it. Easy, simple. Now, okay. So we are done with the amendments. We are done with amendments. Now we can move on to question. But before moving to amendment, I will summarize everything. In chapter one, small company. In chapter two, six months has been reduced to three months. That is old amendment. Chapter three. we cannot offer private placement to a person who share who is from a country who shares land border with india except without the approval of government that is after taking government's approval under foreign exchange management not debt rules 2019 we can allot there is no amendment in chapter 4 in chapter 5 that is chapter of deposit auditors declaration has been introduced in form dpt3 in charges if you are creating charge in favor of rbi no need to register charge if you are a banking company a yes or no now in uh, seventh chapter that is management administration there are certain informations that you cannot disclose to a person who is inspecting your register of members like pan number email id address yes or no in chapter number 8 that is declaration of dividend there is no there is one amendment in ipf that uh, sbo shares will also be credited to ipf and in accounts of companies first they have given clarification regarding csr then they have given this thing reporting of csr2 how it will be done see i have summarized everything for you for financial year 2021 as well as 21 22 i believe from 22 23 onwards everything will be smooth let us see let us wait for another amendment and the other things is they have changed uh they have changed something in uh, that is books of accounts to be maintained in electronic form they have added word at all times after accessible in india they have given that you should give name and address of the service provider which is present in india so that we can communicate yes or no then periodic basis has been replaced by daily basis then here 
they have given 2 percent or 50 lakhs whichever is higher a yes or no they have omitted ek sa ek bar laga dala to 3 saal ke life jingal ala so that is also now been omitted so there are certain amendments to look forward there are certain amendments from which they can ask questions say for example they can ask question from the amendment of csr not clarification of csr amendment from csr they can also ask question from small company they can also ask question from private placement that land border wala area a yes or no so please 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 read these amendments very carefully especially for chapter 9 especially for chapter 9 these amendments are not very huge but you need to be updated right now ahead, we'll move on to question and answer section simple let us start now since the discussion of our amendments are over we will be moving ahead towards the question answers part there are 20 questions in all 10 in mcq and 10 descriptive question now what i will do for case study based mcq for case study based mcq i will give you time to read so now what you will do you will pause the video you will read the question which you have you will pause the video you will read the question okay Chal. so now i hope you have paused your video you have read question and now i will discuss questions directly with you so that it saves our time correct so now first question they have asked you regarding the notice of the meeting given by modern limited regarding notice of the meeting given by modern limited you are required to pick the correct option now from all options we will have to pick the correct option so first they are saying modern limited observe the length of notice see for a valid notice it should be given 21 clear days before it should be given 21 clear days before. A yes or no? It should be given 21 clear days before. Simple, easy. Achha. Now for clear days, date of AGM, date of AGM, date of sending notice, date of sending notice will not be counted. Will not be counted. A yes or no? And again, if the notice is sent by post, if the notice is sent by post, additional 48 hours are not counted. Additional 48 hours are not counted. A yes or no? Simple. So now they gave notice on 5th September to hold meeting on 27th September. And the notice was given by post because the word post was used. Because the word post was used. A yes or no? So now they have given notice on 5th September, the meeting is to be held on 27th September. So, 5th and 7th will not, uh, 5th and 27th will not be counted. Apart from that, 6th September and 7th September is also not count, will not be counted. Will also not be counted. So, we'll have to count from 8th September till 26th September, which will definitely be not, which will not be definitely 21 days. We need 21 clear days. This is not 21 clear days. This is less than 21 clear days. Therefore, the first statement that modern limited has observed the length of notice is incorrect. Is what? Incorrect. Easy? Achha. Second wala, Second point is, notice is given to member irrespective he is insolvent. The answer is incorrect. Notice is always given to official assignee of insolvent member. I repeat, notice is always given to official assignee of insolvent member. Therefore, the statement 2 is also incorrect. Statement 3, notice shall be given to assignee of insolvent member. The answer is yes. And willful omission is giving in giving notice will invalidate the proceeding of the meeting in case of modern limited. Okay. Willful omission. I repeat. Willful omission. A yes or no. So, if you are willfully not giving notice to any member, the notice will be invalid. The statement is correct. So, statement 3 and 4 are correct. 3 and 4 are correct. So, therefore, the correct option will be B option. A yes or no. Now, second question. Regarding the place of 18th AGM, Decide whether the application provisions are violated or not. So, violation because modern limited shall conduct call and conduct AGM only at its registered office. Second option is violation because AGM shall be held at registered office or some other place within same city town or village. Achha, no violation because AGM can be held on uh, in registered office or corporate office or within same city town or village or no violation because AGM of the said company may be held at any place in India. Listen to this. Place of AGM. First of all, AGM should be held in the registered office of the company or within same city town or village. Or within same city town or village. 
बट इफ अ कंपनी इज अनलिस्टेड कंपनी देन दे मे होल्ड एजीएम एट एनी प्लेस विद इन इंडिया नाउ सिंस इन द गिवन क्वेश्चन मॉडर्न लिमिटेड इज नॉट अ लिस्टेड कंपनी बिकॉज दे हैव नो वेयर स्पेसिफाइड दैट मॉडर्न लिमिटेड इज अ लिस्टेड कंपनी देयरफॉर मॉडर्न लिमिटेड कैन होल्ड एजीएम एट इट्स रजिस्टर्ड ऑफिस और सेम सिटी टाउन और विलेज और एट एनी प्लेस इन इंडिया और एट एनी प्लेस इन इंडिया therefore there is no violation because agm of the said company may be held at any place in india so d option is correct for c option regarding vote casted by varnika acha varnika is proxy by the way which statements hold truth so now being proxy varnika is not allowed to cast vote on poll while she can cast vote by show of hands please guys please guys recall section number 105 proxy proxy can vote by poll but not by show of hands i repeat proxy can vote by poll and not by show of hands so first statement is wrong fir being proxy miss varnika is not allowed to cast vote show of hands while she can cast vote on a poll correct she can cast vote by poll and she cannot cast vote by show of hands this statement b statement is correct now despite being non member miss varnika can be proxy but can't vote either by show of hands or on poll c the first part is correct but the second part is incorrect so again point number c is incorrect and d she can cast vote in both the cases the answer is no she can only cast vote in poll so therefore the correct option will be b option simple now for point number 4 regarding inclusion or exclusion of remarks by mr manohar advise the company secretary which of the following statements hold true now please listen to this a chairman has absolute discretion he can write in the minutes of meeting whatever he wants to write whatever he wants to write correct so that the correct option will be uh Mr Manohar's remarks shall be excluded from minutes because chairman has absolute discretion to exclude any matter which is defamatory in his opinion so c option will be correct option simple easy you know now fifth question dash is the cardinal rule of construction that word sentence and phrase of a statute should be read in their ordinary natural grammatical meaning can i say when we refer ordinary natural grammatical meaning we are talking about rule of literal construction rule of literal construction correct now question number 6 abc limited has its shares listed on recognized stock exchange but sebi has found some irregularities in filing by the company now you are an expert you should advise sebi is making application to tribunal sebi is making application to tribunal to, to reopen the books of accounts to reopen the books of accounts a yes or no so they are asking for how many years you can reopen books of account so we are talking about financial year ending on 31st march 2023 that means 2020 2023 so before that 8 years so it will be 2021 to 2021 1920 1819 1717 1818 Fifteen, sixteen, and fourteen, fifteen. Fourteen, fifteen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the correct answer will be D. Correct answer will be D. Sebi can reopen the books of account till two thousand fourteen, fifteen. Simple. Okay, now seventh point. The amount accumulated in IPF shall not. For. Acha, I cannot use the amount which is accumulated in IPF for. Uh, refund in respect of unclaimed acha for this i can use so this will not be the correct answer second reimbursement of legal expenses yes for can also use. so this is also not a correct and donation ipf does not gives grants or donations to central government central government gives grants and donations to i therefore the correct option will be c option ipf the amount which is accumulated in ipf cannot be used to give donation to government easy point number 8 Which among the following will not be considered as foreign instrument? A foreign instrument is an instrument which is drawn in India. It should be made in India and payable to a person resident in India or resident outside India, but is payable in India. Correct? So see, a bill drawn on a person residing outside India but payable in or outside India. See, if a bill is drawn upon a person resident outside India, it is not inland; it is foreign. A bill drawn on a person resident outside India again foreign. a bill drawn on a person resident again foreign because it is drawn resident outside india for point number d a bill drawn on a person resident in india but payable outside india since it is drawn on a person resident in india 
so it will be considered as inland instrument and not foreign instrument point number 9 again point number 9 is very beautiful because omitted this particular uh, section from your syllabus this is from section number 85 but they have asked you a question from that who cannot inspect the ratio of charges and instrument of charges so only members and creators can inspect person other than member and creator cannot inspect so point number c will be the correct answer option c will be the correct option Achha, regarding question number 10 Regarding question number 10, it talks about deposits. So, as per the provisions of Companies Act 2013 and relevant rules there under, an eligible company is not permitted to accept from public or renew the same deposits which is repayable on demand or in less than 6 months. Can I say? Company cannot accept deposits for less than 6 months but cannot exceed 36 months. But for the purpose of meeting any short term requirements of a funds, a company may accept or renew deposit for payment earlier than 6 months also. So the correct answer will be 6366. Minimum period for which deposit is accepted is 6 months. Maximum period is 36 months. However, 6 months can be reduced to 3 months. So the correct answer will be 6366. Easy? Simple? So these were the 10 MCQs which were asked. Now coming to descriptive question. Coming to descriptive question. Please read the question carefully. Pause your video. Please read the question. So that, so that I can directly discuss answers with you. I hope you have read the question. Now, coming to the discussion, Hasprat Limited is unlisted public company. It has paid up share capital of 1.5 crore and turnover of only 18 crores and it is not a startup company. It is not a startup company. Achha, Hasprat is an unlisted public company and Sankalp is subsidiary company of Hasprat. And Sankalp has paid up share capital of 1.5 crore and turnover of 18 crore. And turnover of what? 18 crore. And Sankalp is not a startup company. Is not a startup company. And it is a private company. Which company? Private company. Okay? Okay. Fine. Now, in this context of opposite scenario, please answer the following questions. Whether Sankalp Private Limited is mandatory required to prepare cash flow statement for the financial year as a part of its financial statement. So they have asked you, will Sankalp Private Limited will have to prepare cash flow statement or not? And we will have to answer it in the light of one person company. See, Sankalp Private Limited has 40 members. So can it be one person company? Can it be one person company? The answer is no. It is not a one person company. Achha, can Sankalp Private limit with small company. Now, in this video only, we have already discussed about amendment, right? And the limit for small company is 4 crore and 40 crore. So, can I say Sankal private is within the limits? But section 2 clause 85 clearly specifies that holding or subsidiary company can never be small company. Sankal private limited is not a small company. Achha, Sankalp private limit is actively carrying on its business. Therefore, it is not a dormant company also. And Sankalp private limit is a private company, but it is not a start. Now, every company in India is required to cash prepare cash flow statement except, except one person company, small company, dormant company and startup private company. Since Sankalp private limited is not following not falling in any of these categories, Sankalp Private Limited uh, will have to prepare cash flow statement. Sankalp Private Limited will have to prepare cash flow statement. Correct? So, how we will present the answer over here? Very simple. See, first of all, achha, they have written section wrong. In suggested answer, they have written section wrong. All. Section will be 2 clause 40. Section for financial statement is, I repeat, section for financial statement is 2 clause 40. I repeat, section for financial statement is 2 clause 40. A yes or no? Okay. Achha. Now, they have defined financial statement first. Then they have said that Sankalp is not an one person company. It is not a small company. It is neither dormant company. It is not a startup private company. Therefore, they will have to prepare cash flow mandatorily have to prepare cash flow state so this was a very good question they have asked again but we have to analyze the question and answer that yes it is 
required to prepare cash flow statement because it is not falling in any of the exempt categories okay now second please read the second question please read the second question i hope you have paused your video read the second question now don't you think this pertains to number if trademark of my company is similar to trademark of any other person so that person should make application within 3 years 3 years from the date of my incorporation and here he has made application after 5 years so can i say the owner of the trademark cannot compel my company to change its name cannot force my company to change its name ha however if i agree myself that yes i will change my name then that's a different thing but he cannot compel section number 16 easy again next question yellow limited received a communication from central government for preparation of periodical financial result and complete auditor or limited review of such periodical financials the bod have raised an objection on the ground that as it is an unlisted company periodical financial statement need not be prepared c this question is related to section 129a i will urge student especially jkc student and also non jkc students that please 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 read section 129a at least once before going in exam what does 129a talks about c very very simple periodical financial statement it was a new section inserted in company that 129a it says that central government has power that they can prescribe for unlisted company they can prescribe for unlisted company that they had to prepare financial result on periodical basis to obtain approval of bod and complete audit or limited review of such periodical financial results and file a copy with the register within a period of 30 days of the completion of relevant periodical now what listed company does listed company in every quarter they prepare financial statement so this requirement are now being imposed on public company as well certain unlisted public company are required to prepare periodical financial statement that is financial statement every quarter so if they are preparing financial statement for every quarter it should be approved by board and it should be audited also either it should be audited or either it should be limitedly review either it should be limited review or either it should be audited any of the case and it should be filed with ro so this is the new requirement and therefore the objection of bod on the ground that yellow limited is an unlisted company is not correct because now unlisted companies are also required to prepare periodical financial statement that is financial statements for every quarter simple so this was something from section number 129a 129a now question number 14 upkar nidhi limited it is a nidhi company was about to hold agm on 25th august for which the notice of agm along with relevant documents was sent to all its member including follow now a nidhi company is going to hold they are going to conduct its agm on 25th august 2022 a yes or no for which notice was given see nidhi company will give notice only to those members members who hold 1% of share capital paid up share capital or rupees 1000 face value whichever is lower whichever is lower so first we need to see who are the members who are falling in the category of 1% of paid up share capital or rupees 1000 face value whichever is lower if you are falling in that category you will get if you are holding above limit if you are holding shares above limit then you will get personal notice otherwise nidhi company will just advertise in one local language newspaper that they are going to hold it okay let us see member individually holding shares with face value of 800 which amount to 0.16% of total share capital can i say this member is not holding shares of an amount which is 1000 in face value neither neither he is holding shares which is 1% of paid up share capital so can i say 
will not get personal notice. They will not get personal notice. Again, two members are jointly holding sixteen hundred, which amounted to point three two percent of paid up share capital. Okay, so they are holding one percent or one thousand, whichever is lower. So therefore, limit is therefore limit is one thousand. And since they are holding one thousand six hundred shares of face value one thousand six hundred, which is more than limit. Which is more than limit. Third, forty-two members are holding shares of six hundred and having point one two percent only. So neither the limit of one thousand is touching nor one percent. So therefore, they will also not get personal notice. All members which are remaining are holding one point two percent of the total paid. So can I say the members who will be getting personal notice is the member who are following in point two and point four because they are breaching the limits. Yes or no? This is given under section 136. 136. Simple, easy. So in the AGM held on 25th August 2022, the members are not provided with the facility of voting by electronic means. Okay. Now what you have asked, what you have been asked, in the context of aforesaid case scenario, please answer whether OPD Limited was required to send notice of AGM along with relevant document to all its member. The answer is no, sir. upkar nidhi limited was not required to send personal notice to all its member they were only required to send personal notice to members following in category 2 and following in category 4 and others will be notified through advertisement in one local language newspaper it is given in section 136 easy now question number 15 please read question number 15 i will give you a hint it is from deposit chapter it is from deposit chapter Pause your video, read it. I hope you have read it. Now, Bayer Electrical Limited, having paid up share capital of one crore, they have availed a term loan of ten lakh rupees from ABC Bank Limited to purchase electrical items. Now, Mr. Tar, one of the directors of the company, is of the opinion that it shall be considered as deposit. Is this is this intention correct? So the answer will be no, because exceptions to the definition of deposits clearly specifies. that if a company has taken loan from bank or financial institution it is not considered as deposit correct and second a government company which is eligible to accept deposit under section 76 can accept up to 25% only from public the answer is again incorrect government company can accept up to 35% and there is no bifurcation they can accept 35% from either public or member there is no bifurcation bifurcation is for public company which is eligible 10% 25% if you remember correct so question number 15 is also very easy till now the interesting question was that mcq and this first question hasprat now next question number 16 red limited was incorporated on 1st april 2020 balance sheet was given like this for the past 2 years since the company is incorporated in 1st april 20 only Company has completed only two years till now. Now the company wants to allocate minimum required amount for CSR activity. So first of all, you are requested to advise the company in this regard and compute the minimum amount to be allocated. So I require to advise: Is company liable to do CSR in the current year or not? So which is the current year? 2020 to 23. Financial year 2020 to 23. You have been asked whether company is required to do CSR in 2020 to 23 or not. So for 2020 to 23, whether CSR is applicable or not, I will see the limits of 2021-22. I will see the limit of financial year 2021 and 22. A yes or no? Now in financial year 2021-22, if a company is having net worth of minimum 500 crore or turnover of minimum 1000 crore or net profit of minimum 5 crores. then they will have to do csr so can i say in 21 22 net profit acha we always consider net profit before tax huh? i repeat we always consider net profit before tax because we have a line in our textbook that net profit for the purpose of csr is calculated as per section 198 and section 198 considers net profit before tax easy now So for financial year 21-22, the net profit is seven crore rupees, which is more than five crores. 
सो कैन आई से इन फाइनेंशियल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री सी एस आर इज मैंडेटरी सी एस आर इज मैंडेटरी करेक्ट सो हाउ मच अमाउंट शुड बी कंप्यूटेड और हाउ मच अमाउंट शुड बी कैप्ट साइड फॉर सी एस आर सो इट विल बी लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स एवरेज इन टू टू परसेंट सो वी आर इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री सो लास्ट ईयर विल बी फाइव करोड़ प्लस सेवन करोड़ डिवाइडेड बाई टू सो इट विल बी ट्वेल्व करोड़ डिवाइड बाई टू इट विल बी सिक्स करोड़ इन टू टू परसेंट इट विल बी समवेर अराउंड ट्वेल्व लैक्स सो कंपनी इज रिक्वायर्ड टू एलोकेट मिनिमम ट्वेल्व लैख रुपीज फॉर सी एस आर सर बट वी हैव स्टडीड दैट वी नीड टू टेक एवरेज ऑफ लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स इन कंप्यूटिंग सी एस आर इन कंप्यूटिंग टू परसेंट एक्सपेंडिचर फॉर सी एस आर बट यू हैव डिवाइड बाई टू येस बिकॉज कंपनी इज इन एग्जिस्टेंस सिंस लास्ट टू ईयर्स ओनली Since last two years only, therefore I have divided by two only. Clear? Easy. So this was all the question and answers of companies. Okay. Now we'll move to other laws. We'll move to other laws. First we will see. They have asked one question from interpretation of statutes. When can preamble be used as an aid to interpretation of statutes? So basically, they they have asked question. Internal. Aids of interpretation. The last question from internal aids of interpretation. Correct. Okay. Again, a straightforward question, direct question. You can write, uh, and you know that preamble is only used to understand scope, objective, and purpose of the act. Preamble never overrides the act. If there is conflict between preamble and act, then act will always prevail. Correct. And preamble is only used when act is ambiguous or is any uh, is. Or if there is anything confusing in the act itself, correct? Now, for general clauses act, M owned land with 50 tamarind trees. He sold his land and the timber to N. M wants to know whether the sale of timber tend to amount to sale of immovable property. So, for writing answer to this question, first we will have to write what is immovable property. So, as per general clause of act, immovable property is nothing but land, benefit arising out of land, things attached to land or permanently fastened to land. So, can I say a person has sold his land and trees after cutting those trees from land, after separating it from land. So, can I say land is immovable, but tamarind trees are movable property. Correct. So, according to above definition, land is immovable. However, timber cannot be immovable. I said tamarind, right? So it is timber trees. Okay. So timber trees cannot be immovable property. Correct? Eh? Because it is sold after separating it from the land. It is sold after separating it from the land. A yes or no? Simple, easy. So again, these two questions very, very, very easy. It's tamarind. Now, from general clauses act, what they have asked you? That M owned fifty tamarind trees, land, and there are fifty tamarind trees over it. So he sold his land, okay, and timber after cutting the trees to to N. Now M wants to know whether sale of timber amounts to immovable property or not. See, first of all, M has sold his land to N, so land is immovable property. We all know that. But the trees which M has sold, he has sold those trees after cutting those trees from land. That is after separating those trees from land. Yes or no? So therefore, we will advise Mr. M that your land is immovable property, but your trees, your timber that you have got after cutting trees will be considered as movable property. But how we are supposed to present this answer? So, see, first of all, we will write definition of immovable property as given under general clause act. Then we will explain the, the entire thing, and then we will advise that land is immovable, but his timber cannot be immovable. Timber will be considered as movable property. Correct? Now, now I will move on to the question of Indian Contract Act, 1872. See, please read the question so that I can directly discuss answer with you. it will save our time also i hope you have paused the video and read the question so what is the transaction over here 
See, the case is from contract of guarantee. I hope you have understood it, right? So, Salil has purchased furniture of one lakh from Puran, from Puran, and Mr. Raman. Has given guarantee. Mr. Raman has given guarantee to Pur. So can I say Salil is principal debtor, Puran is creditor, and Raman is short. Okay. On due date, Salil could not make the payment. But the Salil pay defaults. So Puran files against Mr. Raman. Okay. So since Salil did not pay, Puran asked payment from Mr. Raman and. Uh, he fight against Mr. Raman for recovering rupees one. The suit was pending. Father of Mr. Salil. Father of Father of Mr. Salil. While the suit was pending, father of Mr. Salil paid rupees twenty thousand to Puran on behalf of his. Okay. So Salil was about to pay one lakh rupees to Puran, which he did not pay. Therefore, father of Mr. Salil paid twenty thousand to Puran, and Raman was not aware about it. And Raman paid entire one lakh to Puran as surety. Now later on, when Raman realizes that Puran has already got twenty thousand, Raman asks refund of rupees twenty thousand from Puran. So is Raman entitled to refund? can he claim refund from mr puran the answer is yes because as per section 28 i repeat as per section 28 i repeat once again as per section 28 liability of surety is coextensive along with principal debtor which means surety will only be liable up to that extent till which principal debtor is liable so once father of salil has paid rupees 20000 the liability of salil remains of rupees 80000 only Now, since Raman paid one lakh without knowing that twenty thousand is already paid, so therefore he can now claim refund of rupees twenty. Yes or no? Very simple question. It pertains to section number one twenty eight. Very very easy question. Again, question number eighteen. In question number eighteen, bill is payable to Amir. Then Amir endorses it to Rani. Rani to Kajal. काजल टू शाहरुख शाहरुख टू माधुरी एंड माधुरी टू अगेन अमेर एक एन एस ए बिल इज नेगोशिएटेड बैक इफ यू सी बिल इज नेगोशिएटेड बैक दिस कंसेप्ट रिलेट्स टू नेगोशिएशन बैक वेर इफ अ इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज एंडोर्स एंड आफ्टर एंडोर्समेंट इट अगेन कम बैक टू द पर्सन हुव एंडोर्स इट then it is called as negotiation back and all the intermediate holders are discharged all the intermediate holders that is amir rani kajal sharuk and madhuri are discharged but what they have asked state with reasons under provision of negotiable instrument act whether amir can recover the amount of the bill from rani kajal sharuk and madhuri if he has originally endorsed the bill to rani by adding the words sans recourse a sans recourse means without risk so can i say amir has endorsed instrument by using what sans recourse sans recourse so now what will happen say amir is drawer right let us assume draw is malaika so on due date amir will ask payment from malaika malaika refuses amir will ask from madhuri madhuri will ask from sharuk sharuk will ask from kajal kajal will ask from rani and rani cannot go to amir rani cannot go to Amir, because Amir has endorsed sans recourse, which means without risk. At the time of endorsement itself, Amir has specified to Rani that in future, if anyone does not pay you, you can you cannot come to me. You cannot come to me. So can I say in this particular situation, in this particular situation, since Amir has endorsed sans recourse, all the intermediate holders are not discharged, and therefore Amir can recover from everyone. Amir can recover from everyone. If this endorsement was without recourse, 
then Amir could not have recovered because all the intermediate holder would have been discharged. But since it is it was sans records, Amir can recall from Rani, Kajol, Sharuk, Madhuri, everyone. Easy? Clear? So this was your RTP and this was the question and answers of your RTP. Uh, overall, I would rate it was not much difficult, but it was not much easy also. It was a neutral RTP. You can expect 5 to 7 marks question from this RTP as well. And regarding amendment, the amendment which are given in chapter number 1 which relates to small company, chapter number 3 which relates to uh, giving private placement offer to a person who is a person who is a national of country sharing land borders with India. Then again, amendment of chapter number 9. You know, all these amendments are important which you need to focus. Correct? On this note, I will end this RTP session. And guys, all the best for your examination. Good luck. Bye-bye.